So in the last video, we talked about the PN junction diode, and we drew out its band diagram, uh, and we found that we can calculate the minority carriers on one side from the majority carriers on the other side using the built-in potential and the diode voltage. So for example, the holes uh, on the N side are just equal to the holes on the P side, times the exponential of e to the minus VBI minus VD divided by the thermal voltage phi T. And that's where we're assuming that there's a certain voltage VD applied to the diode. And so in this video, we're interested in solving the continuity equation for the PN junction diode. So we're interested in figuring out exactly what is the current flowing through this diode that results from the voltage that we apply. So if we draw out the PN junction, uh, you, we, should, we should be very familiar with it by now. So we've got our acceptors on the left-hand side, our donors on the right-hand side, and collectively they form the depletion region. And on each side, the depletion region is assumed to be abrupt, and it's assumed to be a certain width on each side. And that width is going to depend on the concentration of dopants on each side. Uh, but we just call this width Xn and this width Xp. Now, so I'm lazy. I want to solve the continuity equation as few times as possible because it is a pretty nasty and complex equation. Um, and so to do that, we're going to recognize that, well, this P side uh, we might have doping of say 10 to the 16 per centimeter cubed on this side. So we, we're, if we assume total ionization, we're going to have that many holes. And this will give us about 10 to the 4 per centimeter cubed uh, electrons over here. And if we've got similar doping on the N side, just you know, for simplicity's sake, just to get a sense for the numbers involved, uh, say 10 to the 16 per centimeter cubed electrons and about 10 to the 4 Per centimeter cubed holes. So on the P side, some electrons might occasionally wander into the depletion region, and then when they do, uh, this extremely large electric field is just going to very quickly uh, make them zip across the depletion region. But no matter how many are passing from the P side to the N side, the amount, uh, the concentration on the P side is so small uh, that the delta N, the change in concentration on the N side, is going to be much, much less than the equilibrium concentration. Similarly, on the P side, delta P is going to be much, much less than the equilibrium concentration. But for the holes that manage to make it over to the N side, uh, we've got an initial concentration over here of 10 to the 16. Uh, per centimeter cubed. So for the holes that manage to make it across, the holes that have so much energy that they can overcome the electric field pushing them back, um, this huge concentration on the P side, 10 to the 16 relative to 10 to the 4, this is going to mean that delta P on this side is much, much greater than the equilibrium concentration of holes. And similarly on the N side, delta N is going to be much, much greater than the equilibrium concentration of electrons. And so on this side, we only need to solve the continuity equation for delta P. So on the N side, we only need to solve for the minority carrier concentration. And on the P side, we only need to solve for delta N because delta P on the P side is gonna be tiny. Delta N on the N side is gonna be tiny. So their contributions are going to be negligible. Now, what about within the depletion region? Um, well, that's, that's an interesting question, uh, and to analyze it, we're going to make a certain assumption. So since the carriers, since there's no equilibrium carriers within the depletion region at equilibrium, uh, there's basically nothing to recombine with. So the only opportunity these holes flying across uh, have to recombine is with the other electrons that are flying across in the opposite direction. And we're going to assume that this process of recombination uh, doesn't occur very often. So there's very little recombination uh, in the depletion region. In the depletion region. 
So if we go back to our original continuity equation, the one that we derived everything from, remember all that says is that the whole concentration is continuous in a continuous um, substrate, or that the rate of change of holes per unit time must be entirely due to the processes that add holes to that region, or uh, one over Q times the current, the derivative of the current, uh, because just current passively flowing through doesn't add any holes to a region, but an increase in current on one side relative to the other side will mean there's an accumulation of holes within this region, uh, plus the generation rate minus the recombination rate. And so if we assume the recombination rate here is negligible and that the generation rate uh, doesn't generate nearly as many holes or electrons as the injected holes or electrons, the ones from the other side, and we can ignore these two terms. And if we're interested in steady state, the steady state solution, so not the very rapid uh, transient response that happens, but rather the value as it approaches time of infinity, then the rate of change per unit time uh, is going to be zero. So we're left with a simple equation, 1 over Q uh, times the derivative of whole current with respect to X is equal to zero. Or since the derivative is equal to zero, the whole current must be constant throughout the depletion region. And if we do a similar analysis, we get that the electron current must also be constant. Now this is really helpful uh, because remember, we said that we wanted to solve the uh, continuity equation for delta N on the P side and delta P on the N side. And now we're saying that the whole current, which I'm gonna denote in red, uh, JP, is constant throughout the depletion region. And we don't know what its value is, but it's constant. And the electron current, similarly, is constant as well. So if we also recognize that in the steady state, if we're assuming that there's no accumulation of charge at any point in the semiconductor, then at any point, the total current I, or similarly, the total current density J, must be the same. So J is uh, constant throughout the entire PN junction. It's not saying JP is constant and JN is constant. They might, so once we get to the P region, the J, JN might fall off and JP might increase, or once we get to the N region, JP is gonna fall off, JN is gonna increase. But the total current uh, throughout the semiconductor is constant. So if we add JN plus JP at any point, uh, we're going to get the same value. And that's just J. So we can pick any point we want. Uh, but ideally, we want to pick a point where we can solve the continuity equation in this region for delta N and in this region for delta P. So the point, the most obvious point, is right here at the edge of the depletion region. And similarly, right here at the edge of the depletion region. So this allows us to solve the continuity equation uh, just like we want to for the appropriate minority carrier in each region. And it lets us uh, calculate the total current at any point within the semiconductor. So in the next video, we're going to apply the, a simplified version of the continuity equation with all the assumptions we've just made uh, and along with some more. And we're going to figure out what the total current is through the PN junction diode. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them below, and I'll see you next time.